Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's live production of Mongo DB Days here in New York City. We go to these events, we extract the signal from the noise, we bring you the best guests that are in the events, and we try to get them to share with you as much knowledge as we can about what's going on uh, at these sessions, about particularly the ecosystem, the technologies, the partnerships that are going on, how practitioners are applying technology to create business capabilities. Matt AC is here. He's the Vice President of Biz Dev and Corporate Strategy at TenGen, somebody that many of you are familiar with. Uh, most recently, he's you know, blogging for Read, Write, Web, and many, many others, CNET. Uh, been around for you know, numerous companies. Matt, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Great to see you. So, uh, well, first of all, you know, how's the, how's the stint going at uh, TenGen? So I wouldn't use the word stint. I've been, um, I've actually gone through a fair amount of churn the last few years with pre-revenue startups, two of which got acquired, but TenGen is, feels different. Like it's going to be a company that's going to be here for a long, long it's time. It's not a stunt, it's not a stint. Not a stint, a, not a stunt, it's, it's, a, it's a real company. It's a long-term gig. It's kind of weird, but it's <laughs> real, yeah. <laughs> we have 250 employees, we heard today, 100 engineers working on the, on the product. Yeah. So you're excited. Yeah, no, things are good, and it's, it's um, we're in, we're in the fortunate position because of some of the early work and continuing work that the engineering team has done as well as our community team. I, I mean, I, I started to say engineering team and then I realized that it's broader than that. But we're in a fortunate position now where we, we're the market leader in our, in our category in NoSQL, um, which has, brings with it some responsibilities, but also a lot of benefits. And the benefits are that we're, in my job, in business development where I'm working with partners, we're the first, for the first NoSQL company that, that they call. And it's, so it's, it's fantastic to be in that position. Because I've been on the other side where I've worked for the number two or, or number three player before, and it's, that makes life a lot harder as a biz dev person. Well, well it, was a, it was a Jack Welch said you want to be number one and number, or number two in your markets, but you really want to be number one. You want to be number <laughs> one. So you know, you're number one now, it's a you know, very clear choice. Uh, Talk about, so part of your title is, is uh, head of strategy. Summarize, you know, give us the bumper sticker on the strategy, maybe we can unpa unpack it a little bit. Well, I mean, so, a lot of what I do on the corporate strategy side is more how do we implement some of the technology strategy that we have, and I don't come up with the technology strategy. On the, on the product side, though, like I, I had a conversation in the hall today where um, we, the engineering team has done a great job of building an, a product that developers love. Enthusiastically across the board, really, really love. We have done a less fantastic job to date on making MongoDB easy to manage within the enterprise. We've made some, we've made some improvements in that over the, last, over the last year or so, and we will continue to make improvements, but part of the corporate strategy side was going out talking with customers, saying, hey, where does MongoDB, where is MongoDB great? Where is it not as great? And then taking what we heard and putting that into the, the product roadmap. And we're doing that now. We're coming out, we've just released backup, um, and, and we have other tooling improvements that we're monitoring, making. Monitoring, yeah, just monitoring. as well. Well, monitoring we've had, but we're making improvements, improvements to yeah. monitoring. Um, Tech search is another one. Just things, things that make it easier to run MongoDB in serious production, because that's where, that's where we're at right now, is so where enterprises are doing that. So you got a, you got a toehold, you know, no, <laughs> we've been saying all, all week, database used to be boring, and now it's like the hottest market going, but, but so you got a, a toehold with you know, the leading NoSQL database uh, in a lot of you know, web markets and passionate with developers. And so it sounds like the strategy to expand the TAM is to really do a better job in the enterprise. Uh, expanding the maturity or enhancing the maturity of the product and developing relationships with, with partners who can, who can bring MongoDB to the enterprise. Yeah. Is that a fair summary? That's, yeah, no, that's accurate. We've had, and some of this was intentional on our part and some of it frankly has just been the enterprises have been wanting to use what they saw the Silicon Valley startups and others using um, I mean, big data and the NoSQL, NoSQL databases were born on the web, uh, were born and were no different. Um, and enterprises have been, have been glomming onto that. And so we've, we've been kind of pulled into the enterprise whether we wanted to or not. It turns out that we really do want to be there. Um, and one of the ways that we're, we're 
improving our position, and it's it's frankly, I mean, we've got a long ways to go, but we're pretty strong in the enterprise already. Uh, we had, just in the last six months, we had 100 organizations paying customers. There's many more that just downloaded the product and, um, and, uh, and used it, but we had 100 companies come to us and switch off their existing relational database technology, um, their quote unquote enterprise ready technology and, and move to us. We had many more customers that came to us that, uh, that just for net new applications where they weren't replacing an ex ex existing database switch to us, but so that's that tells me that we're. I don't know if there's a relationship with Oracle announced last night. It's uh, stocks down almost nine percent. So uh, I'm not sure you're talking about them specifically, but uh, <laughs> we're, we've, we've we we've written take, about that. We don't take credit for all of that. <laughs> we've written no, a lot, a lot going on at Oracle, but uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, Matt, I want to ask you. So you are, were were an observer, an independent observer of this space for quite some time. You kind of had the pick of the litter. Um, why is it? that MongoDB has been so successful. To what do you attribute that momentum? The engineering, and I, I think this was, this was intentional, the engineering team built a product that is super easy for developers to use. Is, uh, from what I've heard from, from people, um, and I think IBM may have even said this on stage this morning, a pleasure to use. And it's that approachability of the product and the fact then that you get high performance and scale. But I think more than anything else, it's that, develop, that approachability that has set it apart. Yeah. There are other NoSQL products that, um, that may not have the same range of applicability um, for, for different use cases, but there is no other, so far as I know, no other relational or non-relational database that's as easy to use as MongoDB. That, more than anything else, is what set it up, set us up for success. And then we've had, the, the companies had to do a number of other things to, to build on that success, but that, that was the start of it. I mean, that ease of dimension is becoming so important. I mean, you certainly see the ease with which, you know, developers go to you know, Amazon. We did the ServiceNow event in Las Vegas in, uh, last month, and the ease with which, you know, people can interact with that system. That has so much allure for customers, uh, more so than I've ever seen. Yeah, and that's that's probably the hardest thing. You can you can fix problems with scalability. You can fix technical problems in in, in any product. It's very hard to engineer in after the fact simplicity and ease of use. That's why I mean you see with Apple on on the in consumer products, um, you you watch people trying to catch up with Apple by trying to make their products sleek and, and they almost miss the point. You, you can come up with the shell of a product that looks good, but unless it's that you, you nail that simplicity, it just doesn't, it doesn't take off to the same extent. Again, I think that's something that the, the engineering team and the community around MongoDB has done fantastically In the DNA, well. it's sort of the, the big is, part of the yeah. why they, they started the company. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I wonder if we could uh, go back to the topic of kind of getting into the enterprise market. So we know um, you guys have, have signed some uh, big time customers, MetLife, I know Goldman Sachs is here at the conference. Uh, so kind of talk about how the partnership strategy aligns with kind of getting further into the enterprise and, and helping potentially, you know, you mentioned some of the things you got to work on around uh, making Mongo a little bit easier to manage and some of those more enterprise-y features. Um, how is the partnership going to help you do that and, and what are some of the real specifics about uh, specific ways these partnerships like IBM are going to improve your ability to get into the enterprise? Sure, it's a good question. The, um, so one thing about the enterprise that's not true in Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley is a new startup is born and they use all the latest, greatest technology. In the enterprise, as you know, they may use some of the latest, greatest technology, but they also use the crappiest, <laughs> oldest, stodgiest technology yep. that's been around for 5,000 years. Um, so one of the things that we have to do to really crack the enterprise in earnest is we have to work with the technology that they already have embraced, that legacy technology that's, that's already there. Um, so we've had some things, some, some partnerships announced recently, whether it's uh, IBM or Informatica. These are some of the leading in their respective Informatica and data integration, IBM, kind of across a, a, a range of different um, uh, product categories. These are the leaders that have long-standing relationships within the enterprise, and if the CIO or that uh, that 
director of IT or who, whoever's making that IT decision, she needs to know that there is support for the, for the tools that she already has within the organization. And increasingly, we have the, that support, whether it's, again, IBM, Informatica. We have a few others that'll be announced soon. We're working with Red Hat on OpenShift, which is not legacy technology that's been around forever, but mm -hmm. it's another known brand that if a CIO is going to, to buy into cloud, they're likely to buy from a vendor that they know, that they're already doing business with. And we've got other things, um, with these and, and other vendors that we're working on, partners that we're working mm -hmm. with. And from a technical perspective, um, I mean, these are, these, it strikes me that these are, these are you know, real, real deep partnerships. These are not kind of press release partnerships. Um, so how important, talk a little bit about how important it is to, to really do the underlying difficult work of uh, integrating the technologies uh, and not just kind of the, you know, we see so many other vendors kind of do the, oh, we've got to partner with this person, we've partner with that person, but really, to me, the, the, it's really critical to do the work underneath. Yeah, so IBM, IBM is a really good example of that. So if we announced, as we did, that IBM is standardizing on the MongoDB wire protocol mm -hmm. and query language, and we just kind of leave it at that, well, nobody's going to care. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to care when they read the press release, and then they're going to be, frankly, kind of angry when... Well, exactly. And, and, then, and then they're not going to trust the next thing that we do, um, the next announcement that we make. So that that particular partnership has involved not only numerous conversations between the companies, but a lot of deep technical mm. integration that we're doing and that we will continue to do. Another one is Informatica um, for this, uh, I think maybe the leading data integration product in the, in the enterprise. Um, again, if that's just a press release, and the first time a customer actually goes to, hey, says that sounds fantastic, I use Informatica, I want to use MongoDB as a data source, I'm going to put the two together, and if it doesn't work, mm. we, we no longer live in a world where you can make this, where you can have discrete failures that nobody hears about. Because of the internet, everybody right. hears when things that don't work. Yep. And we need to, that, that technical, deep technical integration is what makes sure that the first time and the hundredth time that they, that somebody picks up that, that partner integration and tries to use it, it's what makes sure that they're going to communicate that success mm -hmm. on the web. Right, no, I, I think that's critical, especially in this, you know, in the quote unquote big data space. There's so many companies uh, kind of popping up and uh, so you see a lot of these uh, announcements about partnerships, but uh, again, uh, I'm impressed with what Mongo's, uh, what Tengen is doing with really doing the deep partnerships and really make them, making them effective and, and you know, really valuable for the users. Um, so, you know, so we talked a bit about some of the more traditional technology vendors out there. What about on the Hadoop side of the equation? How does Mongo, and how do Mongo and Hadoop live together and what are you doing on that, that side of the equation in terms of partnerships and uh, strategy? So I will start by saying I think that we need to actually do a lot more there. Uh, we are in conversations with a number of the Hadoop vendors to figure out integration. We have, we do, um, we have built-in MapReduce, we have um, a Hadoop connector that we've, that we, that comes out of the box integrated into um, Tengen, but I think the next phase for us with Hadoop is Again, people are, are picking sides and they have their chosen Hadoop vendor that they want to work with. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we are integrated with those particular distributions. So whether it's Hortonworks or, or MapR or um, EMC slash Pivotal slash, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever they're called today. Um, we need to make sure that we work with their chosen partners. And that's, that's something that frankly, we haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. we, we're in conversations, but we haven't finished that yet. But we find, the marriage of um, Hadoop for kind of analytical processing, data processing, and, and MongoDB for storage and um, and that that side of it, it's it's perfect. So it's it's something that we hear about from customers all the time. So we have a, uh, I guess I would say, it's in our self interest to make sure that we get that right. Right, and I, and I like again the approach, the open approach. You've got to work with with all the different flavors and, and, and you know, customers have, as you said, their chosen vendor and it's important to give customers their choice. It yeah. sounds like that's uh, you know, certainly in your uh, part of your strategy. Now, can you talk a little bit more about um, the IBM relationship? Uh, in particular, I'm interested in your views on the impact on standards. A lot of people are saying, okay, well, you know, IBM's throwing holy water on, on, on Mongo and, and, and JSON interface and that's going to uh, drive standards much in the same way as it occurred in Linux when IBM you know, blessed you know, the, the Linux movement. Is it a valid comparison, and, wh and what do you see in terms of the impact of that blessing on the standards? 
So I don't know if you're using the religious terminology because I'm from Utah or not, but uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that <laughs> holy water. Um, I'm a Catholic. That's you know that's what we say. It's the, you know, the, what can I say? So I think. <laughs> So in IBM's presentation this morning, they talked about different ways that standards get created. One way is for standards group to get together and sit in, frankly, hotel rooms like we're at here today with no natural lights um, and, and, and come up with what should happen. And they said that's one way, and it doesn't actually work that well. The other way is for de facto standards to arise and for the vendors to get behind that. And they said that that actually tends to work a lot better. And that they, they find that they can then help along that standard. Like, so OpenStack is an example, Linux is an example. Linux was being used before IBM got involved, but I, I remember the day when IBM made the announcement that they were com committing a billion dollars to Linux. Yeah. I was a, working for a Linux vendor at that time, and it completely changed the dynamic of the industry where we went from being, having to, explain why anyone should use Linux to suddenly Linux was like, okay, it's blessed, the holy water. Um, and it, it, the same thing has happened with IBM and OpenStack. I, OpenStack was an interesting and frankly popular project and then IBM got involved and it just ballooned. And we're, so coming back to your original question, do we expect that sort of um, halo effect from IBM on MongoDB. We are hopeful that IBM will, their involvement will continue to make MongoDB super popular. I would say that even more than just the popularity thing though, what we're excited about with IBM is IBM has been serving the enterprise since Adam and Eve walked in the garden. We're going to continue with the religious <laughs> metaphor. Um, and the, that helps us because MongoDB has been serving mostly to date these kind of up and coming new school developers, we need to solve all the boring problems too of security, auditing, all these sorts of things. And IBM knows those things cold. And having their expertise in, in improving the code and in, improving the way we think about it, that's, I mean, it's invaluable. So IBM's baptism into the Okay, we're, at some point we're going to have to right. stop with this. <laughs> yeah, okay. How far can we take so, this? So uh, my question is, uh, so, and I, and I wonder if again you can comment, when IBM got into the whole Linux movement, a, a big part of that was competition with Microsoft, because they were getting killed in OS2 and Windows, and Mills saw, hey, <laughs> we're not going to win that battle head to head. In fact, interestingly enough, they had just bought Lotus. Right. <laughs> and then they said, oh, by the way, we're going to invest a billion dollars in, uh, in, uh, in, in open source, and Lou Gerstner must have loved that. Obviously, it paid off. But there was an enemy, if you will. Um, OpenStack actually in a, in a similar way, um, maybe not enemy, maybe a frenemy in VMware. Somebody who is sort of, you know, leveraging a lot of the or, customer or momentum. Or Amazon. And, and certainly Rackspace and OpenStack with, with Amazon was, a, was originally sort of a, we called it a, sorry, to keep the pun, we called it at the time a Hail Mary <laughs> against Amazon, but it, but it ended up being more <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but we <laughs> ended up being more of a, 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 a bulwark relative to VMware, and, mm -hmm. and even VMware is now having to, to hop in there. That's a really whole another interesting talk track. It there's, doesn't seem to be an enemy here. It seems to be more opportunistic, but help us sort of squint through that. So there could be, um, if I'm IBM, like IBM's, one of IBM's biggest competitors is Oracle, so this could potentially be like, seen as, as being steered toward them. I, but I don't, think it's, I don't think it's that narrow. Like, mm. um, again, on stage today, IBM said, we would welcome Oracle's involvement in this standardization of the MongoDB wire protocol. And Linux, Oracle, query you know, language, yeah. Linux No, I mean, I, IBM, and these, these companies are grown ups and they're used to this open source where you both compete and, and uh, cooperate with each other. So, I, yeah, I don't think that there is any mm. particular enemy that they're fighting against, and frankly, they're they're really not fighting against like the enemy of, of relational database technology. This is this is actually a way of making the two, the old world of and the systems of record, we'll say, and to use Forrester's um, 
thing, systems of record versus systems of engagement. It's a way of actually making those two worlds mesh really nicely together so that a developer d can, can blend what she knows well from the relational world and, and these, whether it's a general ledger system or their ERP system or, or whatever, marry that with the systems of engagement, these mobile applications that she's building, it, it's actually, I can't really think of who the enemy would be here other than really crappy software. Well, and <laughs> that's good, that's a good enemy. Uh, when, of course, Mike Olson, the former now CEO of Cloudera, is often fond of saying, look, this is incremental. Um, now, now maybe that's you know, just being respectful, Oracle's a big partner, but. but I, think it's, I think in Mike's case, that's him just being gracious yeah, because Mike wants to obliterate every one of those. Well, oh, sure, <laughs> but, and, and so exactly, and so I think that, but that, that's a question that we ask a lot in SiliconANGLE and Wikibon: is is this really all incremental, or is the is the sort of big data tail gonna, you know, that's wagging the dog wagging today, the dog. ultimately going to be the head of the of the animal? And many people believe that it is. What do you What do you think? So I think um, I think we have years, decades maybe, of peaceful, somewhat peaceful coexistence. Like I said, we've had, just in the last six months, 100, 100 defections from relational database um, in, in applications and projects that we've been selling into. Um, 100 defections to MongoDB. Um, and those are the ones that we can count. Those are paid customers. And I suspect that that will continue to improve uh, and accelerate. But but we're talking about a universe of a $30 billion market of, app, of existing applications. It's going to continue to grow. There's, there's just so much room to work together on, on things like this that will we reach a point eventually where NoSQL is cannibalizing, like completely cannibalizing the relational database market? Maybe. Like I think if you think of it as like a Venn diagram or there's, there's overlap between what a relational database and a NoSQL database can do today, but I think the universe of applications that are applicable to a NoSQL database is actually growing faster than, I know it's growing faster than the universe of, of applications that are suitable for a relational database. Have, you, have you seen our forecast on that? I'll have to show it to you. No, it's I'd a, love to. It's actually, it's interesting. Uh, David Floyer did it, and, and, and you know, SQL is getting a boost from all this as well, but NoSQL is growing much, much faster. So, uh, it's so, so to the point, part of it is, is defection and cannibalization, the other part is you know, rising tide lifts all ships. Um, all right, Matt AC, thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. It's really you. a pleasure you know, speaking with you, and uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it, thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Jeff Kelly and I, I will be back. We're here live at the MongoDB Days event in New York City. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.